Remembrance and Hope. I'm Simon Burville, co-founder of Gaze Burville, designers and makers of fine outdoor furniture. And I have a story to tell of a magnificent oak tree of exceptional provenance, which commemorated a terrible battle and which in turn was devastated by a terrible storm, but which now lives on, adding a greater meaning to a life cut short. This is a story of remembrance and hope, which also had a twist in its tail as we unexpectedly revealed secrets which the tree had kept hidden for over half a century. The Battle of Verdun, fought from the 21st of February to the 18th of December 1916, was one of the largest and bloodiest battles of the First World War, with over 700,000 casualties between the French and German armies. January 1919, two oak trees were planted in the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew, from acorns picked up from the battlefields of Verdun in 1917. They grew into a living memorial to those who lost their lives, including staff from Kew Gardens, not only in the Battle of Verdun, but also the whole of the Great War. These trees became known as the Verdun Oaks, one of which was planted in a prominent position beside the Chinese lions and lake, close to the war memorial plaques situated in the Temple of Arethusa and near to Victoria Gate. For 94 years, it grew to great stature and great girth, thanks to its sunny position in the garden with no other trees to compete with for light, and it became a magnificent oak tree. Six years short of its 100th birthday, it was severely damaged by St Jude's storm on 23rd of October 2013, and in January 2014, 100 years after the start of World War I, it had to be felled. Tony Kirkham, who is responsible for all 14,000 trees at Kew, called me in January 2014 and asked me to have a look at the trunk as he had had an idea to make a special seat out of this tree to mark the centenary of the end of the Great War and to be unveiled in November 2018. It was a damp and dreary winter's day when Jeff Tyler, an experienced timberman, and I arrived at Kew and the two of us were not that optimistic about finding useful wood because parkland trees do not tend to produce fine timber and 97 years old is actually very young for an oak tree. However, this was an impressive tree for its age and we could see there was usable material in it and helpfully Jeff also had the foresight to ask Tony if other trees had come down in the storm which might also produce good or interesting wood. We ended up taking a full arctic load away to Helmdon Sawmill in Northamptonshire where expert miller Steve prepared all the trees for sawing, first by removing the bark and then inspecting them closely with metal detectors. We started off milling these 14 trees and then finally it was the turn of the Verdun oak. Watching a tree trunk go through a sawmill is one of the most knuckle-biting stages in the transformation of tree to usable boards, as you never know what you might find. It is all the more exciting when oak is being quarter sawn, a highly skilled cutting technique which, as well as revealing oak's unique and beautiful medulla rays, also produces the most stable cut, with the annual rings running perpendicular to the surface. At my company, Gaze Burville, we think of it as the fillet stake of the tree. We were on the final quartered segment of the Verdun oak tree and had successfully produced 18 boards from the trunk when we suddenly hit a series of nails and with a dreadful screech and loud clatter we were left with a broken saw blade and a large piece of partially milled oak in a state too dangerous to saw into. Serendipitously, this orphaned piece, a sculptural V-shape, possibly for Verdun, had its own beauty about it. The iron nails buried deep in the tree had reacted with the oak, creating livid purple stains like a large dark wound which was poignant and rather haunting. And so, unexpectedly, the Verdun bench was born, a raw, evocative piece which shows its scars proudly. An unveiling ceremony for this historic piece took place on the 19th of December 2016 at Kew, 100 years and one day after the end of the Battle of Verdun. It can now be seen positioned along the path facing across the lake to the palm house, close to the remaining Verdun oak tree and at the foot of the slope leading up to the rotunda. Many people have asked me, 
What were the nails doing in such an important tree, and when were they driven into it? By carefully studying the end grain, where every piece of wood reveals the life it had while being created, and correlating it back to the base of the whole tree, it was possible to pinpoint when the nails were hammered into it. And this was around 1946 to 1948, when the tree would have been just 27 or 29 years old. Might it have been a sign, drawing attention to the tree once more at the end of World War II? Or simply a notice asking people not to feed the ducks or swim in the lake? Perhaps we will never know. As the future Verdun bench was creating drama in the sawmill, the beautiful unblemished boards successfully cut from the Verdun oak trunk were quietly taken away by Jeff Tyler and his team to be air-dried, a stage which continued for two and a half years before being kiln-dried at the very end of 2017 and then delivered to Gaze Burville's workshops in Hampshire to create a further memorial. The seats made from this wood are not only a unique celebration of the end of the First World War, but also an invitation to reflect on the terrible losses suffered in it, and remember those, including staff and former staff of Kew, who gave their lives, and those who survived but whose lives could never be the same again. So there are two sides to this, remembrance and hope, and our seat for Kew is actually two seats, connected at the top, tall and dramatic, curving in, backing onto, curving out. The first side, to mark remembrance, looks towards the crossroads circle and faces the war memorial at Kew. It has the concave side of the curve and is a contemplative space, enveloping and sheltering, with references to the war through the use of corten steel and scorching of the oak, as well as its design, which draws inspiration from the coils of barbed wire used in the trenches, but transformed into tactile oak coils. The other side represents hope and looks southwards across the lawn towards the great palm house. The convex shape of the seat on this side curves upwards and outwards and is optimistic in outlook, confident and open to the world and celebrating nature's healing touch. Here, a stainless steel structure supports the silvery grey oak branches. Formed individually by hand, with each piece paying attention to the grain of the unique oak from which they were made. The overall form of the seat references the shapes of the great palm house, which acts as a magnificent and uplifting backdrop to the piece. The design work to create this seat began in 2015 and included building a full-scale, four-metre-wide mock-up profile to determine its comfortable shape and also to act as a canvas onto which various forms of lattice were projected as studies for the seat backs. This sculptural seat, into which we have poured every ounce of know-how gained from over 25 years of producing fine outdoor furniture, combines this wood of such exceptional provenance with materials evocative of both the war and the future and forms a unique and lasting addition to Kew's world-class collection of plants and plant-related objects. Unveiled on the 8th of November 2018, just three days before Armistice Day, on the 11th of November, it marks the centenary of the end of the Great War. As the world's leading seed bank and botanical science centre, we should show no surprise to learn that a cutting from the fallen Verdun oak was carefully grafted by Tony and his team, and the planting out of this new, young Verdun oak to coincide with the installation of the Remembrance and Hope seat reminds us that the future should be full of young growing things and that with tragic loss, renewal must follow, just as with sad remembrance, must come hope for the future. Having studied forestry as well as furniture and continued working with oak trees, their wood and even acorns, my experience as a trustee of woodland heritage and founder of Gaze Burville has given me a fascinating exposure to this cycle of renewal. At Gaze Burville, we feel privileged to have contributed practical experience and design expertise to such a once-in-a-lifetime project, commemorating, with the world-renowned Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew, the endings of both the Battle of Verdun and of World War I itself. Both the Verdun bench and the Hope and Remembrance seats have been generously supported by private donors, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank them and also the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew, for enabling this inspiring story to be told, 
connecting new generations to the suffering of the Great War, but also the healing process of growth and renewal. Thank you for watching. The Royal Botanic Gardens, Q offers many more opportunities to sponsor benches, trees, books and other items at Kew and Wakehurst. By celebrating memorable moments or commemorating a special life through Kew, you will also be supporting their vital science and conservation efforts. To find out more, please phone 020 8332 3645 or email commemorative at q.org or visit their website www.q.org slash commemorative. Thank you.